Hi everybody, welcome to my video. I begin in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. I ask you, do you know your Heavenly Father? How do you imagine Him to be? I ask this because far too many people seem to think of Him as a harsh and mysterious distant figure who focuses on sending people to hell. And that's wrong. You know, they think he's pointing his almighty finger and in a booming voice saying, into hellfire you go for eternity. And that negative image of God is incorrect, completely inaccurate. And I fear it keeps us from opening our hearts to be filled with his love because he wants to love us, but we shut him out so often. I understand people saying, well, how can we uh, love someone that we fear so much? Well, the problem is we have the wrong idea of who he really is. So I ask us all, let's push the refresh button in our minds. And I'm going to try to paint a new picture for you, the real picture of God. First things, God is love. He created love. He disperses love. He is the source of all love. And though we could never comprehend with our human mind how much He loves us, let's try anyways. Our Heavenly Father loves us so much He created us in His own image. Plus, He took the time, energy, thought, and love to make each one of us unique and special, different from any other. Even twins are different. He knows us better than we knows, know ourselves. He knows our personalities inside out, our strengths and weaknesses, fears, our sorrows, everything. If we had, and this is huge, if we had the tiniest knowledge of his inner workings in our lives, we would be overcome with awe how he juggles many things and situations to create opportunities for us to do good and thus draw closer to him, helping others, making it a better world for everyone to live. But even after we mess up time and time and time again, he is there, he is anxious to forgive us and set us back on the right path throwing more opportunities to do good. His love is so great, He has given us a free will, meaning He does not force us to love Him back. Even though He's given us everything, including life, He doesn't force us to love Him back. But He wants us, He wishes that we would. And I remind you that God Himself hurts too. He feels pain, he's concerned, he feels rejected when his children go astray as we do, and especially when they refuse, when we refuse to let him steer us back on the right course, despite his willingness to forgive us. Also, can you imagine the father's sadness when Jesus, his only son, was sent to live a human life for thirty some odd years? And after trying his very best, he was rejected by the chosen people, tortured and murdered. But that was also done for the love of us, so that he could open up heaven for us. So how could we ever, ever think that God does not love us? He has even reserved a place in heaven for each of us, for each and every one of us, so that we can spend eternity with Him at close quarters and bask in His glory. And how He does things in style, my friends. If you can imagine the most beautiful wonders on earth, heaven has all of that, but is many times more awesome, indescribably awesome, a place where there is only happiness, excitement, adventure, learning, praising, and much more. No pain of any sort whatsoever, just joy. Remember that this life is only temporary. We must remind ourselves of that. Live in the world, but not of the world, he tells us. That is why we were created, 
so he would have family, so that God would have families to spend eternity with him. But to claim our prize, we must use our free will that he gave us to choose to love God. Now, how should we love God? By following his Ten Commandments. Right to a T, every one of them. Society thinks that his Ten Commandments are out of date and can be changed to fit modern day living. But they cannot. Why? Because God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He does not change as earthly fashions and trends do. So do not be fooled. Many are. Do not be fooled. Truly, our lives boil down to two options. One, to follow God. Two, to follow the world. Following God leads us to heaven where we belong. Whereas following the world its trends, values, and priorities leads us away from heaven, and you know where that leads. We are speaking about eternity here, so you might want to think about which road you are on right now in your lives. But let's speak about what our Heavenly Father is like. What are His attributes? Because the Bible clearly lists them. God is loving. God is kind. God is compassionate. God is giving, God is faithful, God is merciful, God is forgiving. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God is good, God is righteous, God is caring, God is sovereign, God is our shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God is ever present in our lives, even when we don't think He's there, He is there. God is our refuge. He is our shelter. God is gracious. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. God is a healer. For I am the Lord who heals you, he said. God is one who saves. The Lord our God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. God is a helper, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. He is with us. Reach out to him. Get to know him. He is our God. He is our Papa. He is our sweet Daddy. He is the one who makes all things new. So reach out to your Father. Jesus, he is ever present in our lives. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen.